All right, um, so my name is Victor Powell. Uh, I put together a library called DZ. Um, I guess a little bit of background about myself. I, I'm a freelance data visualizer. Um, this is my website. You should check it out. Um, there's really not a lot there, though. Uh, I think the Twitter's, Twitter's probably more exciting. Um, but anyway, yeah, back to DZ. So uh, DZ is just a library in, in, in a, that, that takes helps you take 3D data and convert it to 2D data. Well, why would you ever want to do that? Um, if you needed to um, project 3D information onto a 2D image canvas, which is uh, ex exactly what happens when, when you play video games. Uh, there's all these, there's coordinates in 3D space, and it needs to in some way eventually become pixel coordinates on the screen. And I couldn't really find a very, a simple way to do that in D3 for arbitrary 3D data. There are tools in 3D or in D3. This is going to be really confusing having to step, say D3 and D, uh, 3D and D3. But uh, bear with me. Um, but anyway, so uh, there weren't really any good tools for doing that arbitrarily that I could find. Um, there are a lot of tools in D3 for projecting, uh, for for doing different types of projections of uh, spherical coordinates. And, and mapping those onto 2D planes, but not just general uh, 3D uh, projections. So D DZ is just a really small tool for taking 3D data and projecting it like our eye does, and projecting it onto a 2D canvas. Um, I'll, so in, a, in the basic form, D D3, whoops, uh, 3D, <laughs> to two, DZ takes 3D and converts it to 2D. Uh, well, why would, why would you ever want to do this? Well, I think there's a missed opportunity in terms of uh, sort of the visual encoding that we um, are sort of born with. We're born with this ability to reason about th things in, in three dimensions. So if, you know, if we're not forced to paper canvas with that only has two dimensions, why impose that restriction in the domain of uh, computer science, right? I said that already. Uh, so Noah. Ilinsky, I hope I said that right, he put together this great chart that sort of like goes through all the different types of visual encodings. I encourage you to read more about this. Um, but basically, the position and placement is, has such a high precedence in, in, in sort of this hierarchy of, of encoding visual information. So why not, you know, why not use that third dimension? Um, OK, so here's a demo of DZ. I'm just kidding. Uh, <laughs> you have to be careful uh, whenever you start using um, any, any additional type of visual encoding. You have to make sure that it, it actually serves a purpose, that it's actually improving the information that you're conveying. So you have to uh, you know, really be careful. I, I just want to sort of warn you a little bit about that. And it's definitely something to consider. D 3D in itself kind of sounds cool. It's like, wow, it's in 3D uh, because it's, you know, it's new technology. And so no matter what you did, if it was in 3D, it's just awesome. <laughs> But that's, that's starting to die down a little bit, and for good reasons. I guess I kind of went through that already. Make sure you need it. Yes. Often you really don't. This is a great example of conveying, by Mike Bostock, of conveying uh, four dimensions of data using a two-dimensional image, ca image canvas in the end. And this is Edgar Anderson's IRIS data set. And each one of these is a different dimension of the, the, the iris plant. And every color represents a different type of iris. Every one of these is a new dimension of every iris plant. And it, it's, it does a great job of allowing you to sort and explore the data. So you don't, you don't need 3D, but it can help if you use it right, like any other tool. Uh, but, but the downside of 3D is 3D is hard. It's really complicated to reason about the type of math that happens in three, in three dimensions. Uh, it's, it's really complex, actually. Uh, it's exponentially more complex because it's difficult to reason about this type of math. Uh, it's easy for us to conceptualize it and digest it, but it's hard to produce it. It's generally good for geometric data, things that are already we can already observe in the real world. Uh, we can, you know, sort of reason about the th three-dimensional properties of a teapot. 
uh, not necessarily or not usually good for categorical data. That's not to say it's never good for categorical data, because um, I don't. I think it's good to never say anything in absolute terms. Uh, I just also want to talk a little bit about the existing tools that are out there. Uh, 3JS, if you've ever, if you're familiar with it, uh, is a great tool for creating and manipulating 3D geometry in a browser. And I'll just pull up a quick demo of that. And this is all using WebGL in a browser. And it's really amazing. And so, I mean, it's, you can definitely do a lot with it. Uh, and like I, like I just mentioned, it uses WebGL. And that is a huge advantage because it's really, really fast because it uses the GPU. Some of the disadvantages, it's, it's using WebGL. Well, there's not a document that we can manipulate and we can manipulate nodes with. We're, we're really just, in the end, only dealing with uh, pixel, or sorry, uh, vec vertices, points, lines, and um, geometry. There's no DOM that we can move around like we can with D3. Uh, some other tools are GNUplot. Um, I'm not going to really go into that too much, but it's a it's another way of encoding three-dimensional data and converting it to an SVG format. You can export to SVG. Disadvantages are it's not interactive. You can only sort of export once, and there's really no, no uh, level of, of feedback that you can get from the user because it's just taking 3D data and exporting it to SVG. And the other disadvantage is that there's an entirely new language you have to learn. You can't utilize your existing tools um, and knowledge of SVG, for example. Or, I'm sorry, yes, well, yeah, SVG and CSS. Now to DZ. The advantages of DZ are, are the same advantages of D3. You're manipulating the DOM in the end. Disadvantages, <laughs> you're manipulating the DOM in the end, which can, which can be frustrating, and, and it has some side effects. Uh, for example, surface interactions with 3D geometry are really difficult. Here, there's just, it's really simple for us to think about these two intersecting planes, but whenever we talk about, remember that we're sort of stuck in the world of SVG, right? So we have to represent these, in the end, as really just rectangles, uh, one on top of the other in the case of, uh, in this case. So DZ does, it doesn't really, it makes no assumptions about the data it gets in. It just projects it on into a, uh, under a 2D plane, it's up to you to connect the dots. And it only supports perspective projections right now. And it's uh, also a lot slower than WebGL. And I, I've been talking about it this whole time, but I've never actually, <laughs> that's, a, that's a bad slide. Anyway, uh, I've, I've been talking about it this whole time. Let's see some actual demos. And this is, this is a demo. There's, there's really no 3D yet. There's just a couple of points. But we can very quickly add some depth to it by changing the focal length. So this is just a, this is basically, this is sort of the, the nuts and bolts of DZ. You're given a camera so that you can project, you can use it to project your 3D data. And in this case, we're going to be adjusting the focal length. And I use the coordinates I get back from DZ to, to go then and just update all of my, my SVG circles. Because in the end, it's still just SVG. But even with all these restrictions, in terms of you know, surface interactions and, and what have you, you, you can actually still do a lot with just SVG. Here, here I. I'm applying an opacity depending on the depth, which is just this line. To add some wow, I can animate it. And it's still just D3. And I just thought it'd be cool to show you that uh, the effect is, is the one I just showed you is actually the, the 
uh, dolly zoom effect, which is used a lot in cinematography. And so the, the, I'm moving the camera back at the same time I'm increasing the focal length. And it gives you this really nice effect of uh, the sort of the background fading in, in, in further into the back. So here's another quick demo. Uh, this is all being rendered in SVG, and I'm also using MathJS to, to parse these uh, math, mathematical equations. Whoops. Where did my, okay. Uh, you can even do more complicated things like teapots. If you're from Utah. Um, but, but again, I mean, you, you can't forget about the limitations. We're still manipulating SVG in the end. And so if you, want, if you need that, then this is a, the kind of tool you can use. If not, if that you don't have that restriction, then there are other tools that you can use. Uh, this is the same demo, but in WebGL. And you can see I, can, I, can, I have way more control over the number of nodes I can add. Um, and it's a, it's a lot more responsive. And someone put that demo together, and I was just so amazed with that that I thought I'd share that with you, that someone wrote this equation that generates a, a, a circle. Um, and I guess just I just have a few more slides on sort of what I think of sort of being the future of data visualization, 3D, and, and sort of a, a D3 style. And I think we're sort of missing a DOM, but we sort of already have a DOM in 3D in graphics. If any of you are you know, sort of that familiar with uh, how, how, what a, you know, a scene graph is and how it works, I think there's a, a really a big potential there for a tool to be made in the style of D3, um, but maybe specifically for WebGL. Maybe a data-driven scene graph, if you will. Uh, and that's just a, a thought. And that's, that's the end of my talk. Question? Yeah, can you talk a little bit? Is there a standard math, uh, I guess, philosophy that you're using to take it from 3D to 2D, or is it something that you just did yourself? Standard philosophy? Like a named equation of some sort? I don't know. Um, I, so it's all really just uh, perspective projection. If, that will give you a term to Google, at least. And really, it's just the idea of figuring out how, how to take 3D data and convert it to 2D data in the same way that our eyeball would. There's actually, there's actually tons of different ways of projecting information, uh, but this is the technique that, that we're sort of born with the ability to do. Eventually, all, the, all of the photons we see get projected the same way onto the back of our iris. That's kind of a wild idea to think about. Follow up. Um, do you think that ASM.js, where you're you're uh, basically doing low-level uh, language um, and compiling it into JavaScript would help this? I think it would help everything. Uh, when, I guess when you can, it, it's a trade-off. It's always a trade-off because it's, co it's complicated, but you can, your code runs faster. Uh, I don't necessarily, I can't really think immediately where it would come in, but I'm sure there's just, there's all kinds of different ways and domains of exploration that people can look into that I think would have a lot of benefit to the community. I can't really predict what they, what they would be though. I definitely think, it, to go on a little bit of a tangent, I definitely think there's a lot of potential for ASMJS, or ASM is how you're supposed to say, ASMJS, to be, uh, to, to be used um, to replace some of the internal function of D3. I think someone actually already released a library recently that did some type of computation that D3 does, but sort of faster. And so I, I think there's a lot of little, little tweaks like that that can really improve the performance of D3 without actually us having to you know, change it 
out or like start using some different library. Um, maybe some like N, N body I think is another is a really great example. N body simulations are particularly slow, and so I think there's a lot of potential there to utilize uh, ASM.js to speed up the computations. Can I say something on the topic? Well, just <clears throat> is one thing I find really useful to keep in mind is that D3 as a library has several pieces, right? So there's all this DOM manipulation stuff, and, and we're really used to thinking about you know, messing with SVG, or maybe CSS and attributes. But then there's all the data manipulation stuff, so all the layouts, the force layouts, and DZ falls into this category. It's, it's purely data manipulation, right? So that can be pure JavaScript, that can be done in web workers, that can be done you know, in ASM, or um, you know, even compiled down from something else. So, I, don't know, I think it's helpful to keep that mental model in mind. Like sometimes you think about, okay, how can I take these numbers and turn them into other numbers that are easier to then turn into DOM elements, right? Uh, and the other, I don't know, something that might also be interesting is that DZ actually doesn't assume you're using uh, D3. It all it does is take data in three dimensions and converts it to two dimensions in a perspective projection. And it doesn't do anything more than that. And I think that's a feature. Um, someone, if, if you guys like, I don't, for whatever reason people started to use my library or someone else's, they could, you could easily just like start using somebody else's once they write a better version, as long as it has the same API, right? Anyway, that's, that's the end of my talk. Uh, is there any other questions? Have you seen Brett Victor's um, inventing on principle? Uh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so I, I would, it's, it's just a thought, not a really question. I, I was thinking maybe some sort of online based math education where you have a WYSIWYG editor using your library. Hmm. That would be pretty cool. Um, that, you could get me talking forever about Brett Victor. Uh, so maybe we could talk after, I guess, unless everyone really. <laughs> Uh, what's up? <coughs> uh, just out of curiosity, have you thought of uh, redoing the force layout to do three, three dimensions? Because the force layout, all force layouts I've seen are really two dimensional in nature. So there's, it's not sensible to rotate it, for example, to get a better idea of those spatial relations. Um, that's, it sounds like something that's possible. I mean, you could, it sounds like it wouldn't be too much to take whatever my, my Bostock wrote and just add a, add a Z, uh, but I, that's that's a pretty superficial um, um, guess guesstimation. But it would be interesting, and then you could take that and then feed it into ZZ, and then you could see it in 3D. Um, but it would probably be really really slow. What's up? Uh, as complex as the <laughs> object is, as slower that you see the projection because. So my understanding is you are doing uh, uh, the perspective of the object. So if it's a very irregular object or a very complex object, then uh, it, it's slower to manipulate it or move it or rotate it. Yeah, the general rule is if the more nodes you have, the slower it's going to get. Um, the more nodes, lines, faces, the slower it's going to get. Also, the harder it is for you to like, the more complicated your program's gonna be because you're gonna be having to think about all these different things. Like if you saw most of my demos were just dots because that's the easiest. Um, but, I, and in fact, none of them, I have faces because they're, they're hard. <laughs> and they, they don't, inter they intersect if you don't do it right. What's up? So yeah, do you think, given the, given the issues with intersection and I assume you have issues with, you know, back face pulling and Z order and pushing and all those kinds of things, do you, do you think that this can actually grow to be something that can deal with you know, shaded surfaces and polygons, or is it really just for taking three D points, get them down to two D, and don't use it? For it's definitely the starting point for that for that direction. Um, I I don't know yet whether or not I'm going to continue down that road, but it's it's like totally doable. Um, I don't know. Not, not, might not be very practical because it might really start to slow down. If um, I mean, some of the demos actually they are they do sorting because since you get a depth value out of the projection, then you can just resort the DOM elements based on the depth. And so that works pretty well. Uh, but it, it's, it slows it down. It slows down the demos um, considerably if you have to like wait and sort every, all the DOM elements. So uh, if you don't have to sort, if you don't have to do those types of things, then it's, it, 
it, the more smoother it gets. And so it's a trade-off between um, uh, Z, you know, all the different attributes of Z ordering uh, or whether or not you want to um, add more nodes. Or if you don't care about interactivity, right? Maybe, uh, maybe it's not so important that you can like, see it and manipulate it in three, in three dimensions. Maybe, uh, maybe it, like, you, know, you like, click a button and then it like, rotates immediately. One of the benefits of wireframes, you don't have to worry about that. <laughs> yeah, exactly. That's that. that <laughs> shh. Um, that's why the teapot was a wireframe, because really, there's no, there's no sorting. The lines, you don't like, you can't tell if they're overlapping because they're just black lines. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. One other technology that you didn't mention that I, I've got some good lot playing around with is uh, 3D transforms in CSS. Oh, yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. that's, that's definitely a possibility uh, that you can use, but you can use that already. Um, I, I guess I should have touched on that a little bit. GL support, right? I'm sorry? They work without web GL support, but you do get GPU acceleration. Yeah, you do get GPU acceleration. And actually, what's interesting about the last demo is that um, if you're interested in doing more mobile optimization techniques a lot of like you can actually get a lot of a lot more performance out of mobile development if you just uh, add like transform z0 on mobile phones because then it kicks into the GPU no I was just saying yeah I've, I've used that yeah and it's like it's buttery smooth because it's just right on the GPU um, but I don't know if I don't know I know that Android does that pretty well and so does uh, Safari I'm not mistaken, because that's the amazing thing is like Safari has support for all these really cool 3D, um, uh, like all these CSS properties of 3D transformations, and it's so cool. But um, <laughs> it doesn't have WebGL support, and that's the uncool part. But maybe someday, or maybe not. Anyway, any other questions?